My presentation will be not a, a standard one, uh, and uh, um, it will be about the powers of Yara as you, as you learned from the agenda. And um, I understand that uh, not everybody here in the room may know uh, what Yara is. So as an intro, I, I will just uh, show what exactly Yara is and how we researchers are using that. And then we'll go exactly to uh, the, the presentation slides, all right? So uh, can we? He's cheating again. I am always. Go. OK, cool. All right, perfect. So um, let me just show you. Well, first of all, uh, with Yara, we find a lot of alien stuff. Like as you learned, like APTs and, and stuff, we, we find with Check, check. Um, so let me show you like a, a simple rule, like a hello world in, in, in Yara language. Uh, this is how it look, looks like. Um, so if you, if you cannot read, please move closer, especially from the back rows, because um, I cannot increase the font. So this is the rule that catches alien, and you can see here that we define a string that looks for some alien crap, and then if the alien crap is found, the condition is true, and this is how we find alien stuff. That's because we normally are hunting for some bones as paleontologists in the cyberspace, but in fact, bones are uh, days, you know, when, when, when we find bones, it's a lucky day for us, because most of the time we find just crap. Uh, left by the aliens. However, if you follow these uh, nice trays of crap, sometimes you can find something really, really cool, like the aliens and alien itself. And this is how you run it with Yara. So you run a uh, Yara with the option uh, to check directories recursively, um, and then you look, f uh, you specify the rule and the directory where you start. You'll start from current one. That is why I put dot. And this is where we find um, our alien crap. Of course, it's present in the original rule. However, it is also found in this file. And if you look into this file, voila, we have the alien, right? They move. And this is how we find the alien, because the aliens, they, they leave this alien crap when they, when they move, right? Uh, so that's about, um, that's about in, uh, whole introduction into, into your and how we researchers are using that. Now, um, we need to go to the presentation. However, uh, the organizers did not accept uh, you know, my format because they said, like, uh, give, give us your, your, your slides, and I had no slides because I said um, I have a like, special presentation. And it was also related to the argument with my friend. The friend um, said, OK, you, you are so excited about Yara and its um, capabilities. Uh, and its powers, uh, you're talking about, you know, the discovery of cool stuff. But when you go to SAS, you will still need to use PowerPoint to, to present, right? So you cannot do at least your slides with Yara. And I said, screw you, man. I'm going to do Yara-only presentation without using PowerPoint. So for the rest of my slides, I'm going to use Yara, command line tool, uh, from, you know, from the repository. It's not like a special version. It's like uh, pulled from the GitHub without modification. Um, now, let's go to my directory. Um, so what do we do to, to run, um, uh, to show a slide? We'll, we'll use Yara tool. We'll run again uh, recursively. And um, I'll pass my um, uh, Yara file with, with the talk. Um, and I'll run it in the current directory. Yara also allows you to define external variables. Sometimes you can pass a file name, for instance, to use uh, the condition criteria. Um, then for us, we'll use like a variable slide, and we'll define the index of the slide that we want to show, right? So here we go. So this is the output. You can at least see my, uh, my name and position here, but it looks a little bit messy, right? Um, so we've got to add some, uh, some sort into the output. So let's sort the output. OK, there you go. And my friend told me, uh, like, OK, uh, at least in PowerPoint, I can use, like, when I show my Twitter, I can use this cool icon with the bird. So uh, I, you can see that, in fact, I can do the same with Yara. Uh, now, of course, to comply with Pecha Kucha uh, format, we have to have this slideshow which switches slides every 20 seconds. That's the first requirement. And second, uh, my friend said, like, OK, in PowerPoint, at least I have like, these nice transitions between slides. So I, I wanted to you know, add um, a little bit of the transitions uh, through uh, some Hollywood touch. Okay, so I'll redirect it to the Hollywood. 
and let's see how it goes. Now, again, to comply with Pecha Kucho, we need to write um, a, a little script that will switch the slides every 20 seconds, all right? So I'll, I'll make a, a counter here from i from 0 to, to 20, increment i, and then we do uh, this, and instead of fixed uh, slide number, I'll pass the variable, and, and then here we go. And uh, we shall also add, you know, the slip between the slides, because they will be automatically switched every 20 seconds. Um, so here we go. So this one one liner uh, shall do the rest of the job. Let's let's see. Okay, my name is Vitaly Kamluk. I'm principal <laughs> security researcher, and I'm happy to present here and San Martin at SAS uh, something important: the secret powers of Yara that you will learn during the presentation. Can you please switch? I beg you. <laughs> Uh, all right, this was not, okay, cool, it works, fantastic. Now you're wondering why is this talk, uh, in fact I'm talking about uh, zero days. And why is this talk? Because everybody loves zero days, but it is really, really hard to find them. Like you need to be like hardcore reverse engineer, spend years of, of doing the research, and then finally zero days um, is something that takes like uh, weeks and months of uh, scrupulous work. Now, I'll show you how to find zero days with Yara today. Why and what we will use? We will use Varistotl as one of the sources. Why Varistotl? Because Varistotl, this, and this is some daily statistics, not monthly. This is some select days uh, and stats from uh, file uploads uh, during those days. They process a lot of new files and allow you to reuse Yara to scan all incoming files with your rules. And this is what we will use for hunting. Now, a few words about Yara and credits to the author, uh, Victor Manuel Alvarez, who I hope is not in this room, uh, because uh, I'm really ashamed of what I did with Yara. Uh, and, uh, well, I really appreciate what, of what he did, because um, uh, everybody can download Yara for free. It's open source. You can compile it on any platform. There is very, very nice documentation of Yara in the modules. And... Uh, uh, ways of using Yara. How can you use Yara? Of course, you can implement identification and you know, classify files. You can help speeding up incident response. Uh, you can filter network traffic, but most uh, importantly, you can do presentations. So if you ask why, if you ask why, of course, because it's cheap. <laughs> well, definitely cheaper than, I know, uh, Office. Um, and uh, some big catches that we, we had uh, thanks to Yara, so we definitely found a lot of new stuff, uh, some modules of uh, equation and, and multiple other APTs were on Virusoto even uh, before they were officially discovered. So they were lying there on Virusoto for many years. Nobody just had proper Yara rule to catch them all. And uh, this is where Yara can help us um, to hunt for such files. This is an example of rule, of meta rule, like a rule that catches itself. Um, so um, it can be helpful if you are interested, like sometimes automated systems uh, are funny, they are pulling everything from your, from your hard drive, and on various total you may uh, find like a number of rule sets from security researchers. So if you hunt for rules, uh, you can actually see like what they are doing. And this kind of powers of Yara as well, I believe. Now, this is one of the powerful rules that helped us to find uh, files of this uh, advanced actor known as equation. So this rule uh, looks for anomaly. Uh, the equation developers compiled 64-bit files in the era before 64-bit Windows was available to the developers. So with this simple rule, we were able to catch this anomaly and find um, equation files. Now, here's an example of a good rule. And you can see that meta section with description of the rule, like date and timestamp and MD5 of the file, takes about half of the rule, then some more comments. Um, and this is written by Mr. Kostin Ryu. Uh, Mr. Kostin Ryu is the author of this rule, and it's not like I'm promoting Mr. Kostin Ryu here, uh, because he's my boss, but uh, he's also... He is also uh, the person behind this uh, unknown credit here. Uh, he was nominated for the Pony Award last year 
for discovery of uh, silver light uh, zero day that was patched by, by Microsoft. And the whole story is about discovery of this uh, zero day. Now, on the official website, it was unknown. However, we know here in this room that this was Mr. Kostin Ryan. It all started from the hacking team Breach. And this is the original graphics from Phineas Fisher. I took it. Um, so the uh, hacking team was, was hacked in 2000, oh, sorry, the leak happened in 2015. And there was uh, a message, an email, from a Russian developer, Vitaly Toropov, to David Vincenzetti, CEO of Hacking Team. He offered uh, some zero days in Java, Safari, and so on. And uh, he sold some of them. They were discovered and patched. But one that Pons emails was saying about uh, unpatched vulnerability in Silverlight that has chances to survive for some time. And he also said that there is iOS vulnerability. So for Costin Ryu, at that moment, it was, oh my god, zero day situation. Like There is a zero day on the loose. Maybe we can catch it. How do you catch it? You follow the author, because all you know bas basically is his name. Uh, surprisingly, he had a public profile on uh, sites like OSVDB and PacketStorm Security, and he had some proof of concept code of the already patched vulnerability, including uh, one for Silverlight. So it was a bingo. Uh, so what did uh, Kostin do? He downloaded, of course, his proof of concept code, and it came with a source. Um, so when you inspect the source code, you can see that there is some specific like fingerprint and signature of the developer. Like he's putting this uh, start and end uh, messages uh, before and uh, after the exploit um, is probed. And there are some also uh, exception messages that are included in the code that are quite specific for the developer. So Kostin thought maybe it is reused, maybe the same messages can be found in the binary code. And he created the rule that catches these strings in, um, in any potential file. Um, so this is also a good rule. You see, you, you must check the header. It must be executable. Uh, check for the file size. It's a little bit training. Um, <laughs> So this is the rule that Kostin created on 23rd of July of 2015, soon after the leak uh, happened. So the long wait led to discovery of new file that was uploaded to VT on 25th of November, so almost half a year passed, and the compilation timestamp of that file was July 21. So it was <laughs> like two days before uh, Kostin created the rule. Of course, he reported this to Microsoft. It was confirmed that it was a zero day, and Microsoft successfully patched that zero day. Now, some conclusions. It is possible to find zero days using just your YAR knowledge, without knowledge, uh, without using expensive fathers or um, you know, uh, deep code analysis. Maybe you even can get paid by back bouncy programs if you report this to the vendor. Who knows? Uh, and if you're interested in continuing, there is a link for for a bash script that will download a collection of all such binary files and let you invest, investigate them. One more thing, uh, the same Toropov guy, Vitaly Toropov, had another zero-day file as Safari, which we did not find. Maybe you are the lucky ones who will. And um, after all, my friend, I thought, um, would, would say, like, OK, Vitaly, you went to SAS, you made this wonderful presentation, but it was all in black and white. And I wanted to disappoint him, because with Yara, you can do colors. <laughs> and traditionally, at SAS, we at Kaspersky Great always have credits at the last slide in the traditional Hollywood style with the slide in animation. And I could not you know, remove that from my presentation. So credit goes to Kostin Ryu, Victor Manuel Alvarez, Varis Soto, Kaspersky Lab, and all the ASCII artists. Thank you very much.